everyone. So, um, a little bit, I'm whispering, <laughs> because it's quite early in the morning. Um, it's just after 5.30, it's about 5.40 um, now. I'm just gonna light some, some incense. I, uh, in the mornings I tend to use these um, smokeless incense. My favourite is the cedar wood. Um, so I'll just light some of them. So I thought I would pop on because over the years I've shared um, I've shared with you all um, aspects of my uh, spiritual practice. I've done home tours. I've showed my altar spaces. Um, I've done day in the life. Um, I share my trips with people. But one thing that I was mindful of that I've not really ever spoken about is the fact that, um, and I'm sure I'm not the only person, um, sometimes I let things slip and I can be a bit of a procrastinator. Um, just noticed a bit of wax there, little things like that bug me. <laughs> um, a little bit of a procrastinator. And when you procrastinate um, for too long, then that also has a detrimental impact on, on my spiritual practice. And so um, I think when I did the day in the life, this would be in 2020, so it's over four years ago now. Um, and I used to be very, very good at getting up when the alarm went off at 5 a.m., uh, jumping in the shower, making a cup of tea, and sitting down with my cards, um, writing down my um, intentions for the day, my observations from the cards and um, and then start my day with a meditation and over the years um, I've allowed that to to slip to the point where the alarm will go off at 5 30 and I will hit the snooze button which for some reason is a random nine minutes but I will just keep hitting that snooze button over and over again until it's way after six. And then I get up, I jump in the shower and I, I lay down my, my cards. And I'll look at, I usually do either three or five, um, which I'll explain what they are. And yeah, I'll jot down some notes and that is it. I'm out the door. Um, I, I, I leave here at seven. It's about a 10 minute walk across the city to where I work, calling in at, um, calling in at a coffee shop en route, which I do every day. They have my order more or less f waiting for me. <laughs> I'm that predictable. Um, and I, I realized that I was suffering as a result because I would come home in the evening perhaps record a unboxing walkthrough video. And then when I pull my cards in the evening, I can't even remember the cards from the beginning of the day because I've rushed and I haven't taken the time. So I've set uh, a new intention and I have decided that I'm going to get that time back and I'm gonna get up at 5 a.m. This is the third day, it's Wednesday at the moment and I started this beginning of the week making an intention and I'm going to spend some time with my cards but also um, doing some some uh, mindfulness or a meditation on the messages uh, from the cards which I will I will share that with you so this is now my new morning routine um, so to start off with the beginning of the week, I'm going to pull two cards. I'm just going to turn the camera around. Two cards from 
these these sets here now these are tile gray um, cards and I've had this one since last year which is the um, the pocket edition of the angels and ancestors I used to have the full size edition and I let it go um, a couple of years back and then I was inspired by um, Sandra over at Spirit of Avalon who did a video response to the um, top 10 oracle decks of all time recently and she talked about um, Cal Gray's Angels and Ancestors and I knew that this was in at our local Waterstones uh, I checked on one Symposium, they didn't have it, so I went and uh, got it from a local shop. Sorry, it wasn't Waterstones, I picked it up. Um, no, no, sorry, it was Waterstones. <laughs> I was going to say the uh, the art gallery, but that was a completely different deck um, a few days before that. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I really used to enjoy working with this deck. Um, so I do have a pocket edition which will probably go, you know, in a work bag or something like that. But um, let me just move this little object here. So the two cards that I'm going to pull um, are from either the Ancestors, the Divine Masters. I've had this deck um, since it was released again just over a year. Um, this one's a little bit longer. I've had this a uh, longer angel guide. Now I'm not really into angel cards, um, but these are very different. Let me just uh, oh get the lid off and I'll uh, I'll explain. So even though these are angel cards, they're not angel cards in the sense of. Here's a message from Metatron or Archangel Uriel, Archangel Michael, etc. They are, um, they have keywords on them. You might get a depiction of the angel, um, but for this one, it's about uh, composure. So it's a message for the week, learning, experience, listen deeply. I mean, look at that, isn't that a beautiful image? Listen deeply, um, take a step back. So I find these really good as a focal point. Expect miracles. I mean, we all want to pull a card that says to expect miracles that week, don't we? Um, and so for here, this is the card that I pulled. Well, I pulled two cards this week. Just let it focus. So I pulled winter, which is take care of your needs. That could have been more of an apt message if I'd gone through every card in the deck and pulled one just by reading them, it's perfect for for this week. Um, the other one <laughs> is it's Sita and Rama, but it's about holy union, so it's about soulmate connection and romantic opportunities. But because I know this deck that well, I know that it's also about... Uh, the soul connection and also about being open to new relationships and they don't have to necessarily be romantic relationships but being open to uh, forming new new relationships new friendships etc so what I now do is I have my my journal um, and in the journal I need to make sure there's nothing um, on show here because I use it for work as well it's a bullet journal um, but you will see um, that I put a week ahead in and in there I've put from the ancestors so these these messages from the week are either going to be from the angels the divine masters or ancestors so angels masters or ancestors I only pull two so uh, any combination of that really so the ancestor message is winter Take care of your needs, do your best, then move beyond your fears and limitations. The message from the masters is Sita and Rama, soulmate connections, but it's about heart healing, trusting and being open. Um, and writing that in my bullet journal, rather than my journal where I write my reflections, 
um, is a constant reminder through the week. Because if you're like me and you, uh, you pull your cards, by Thursday, or even by Tuesday, who am I kidding? I'm gonna forget what the message for the week is. So I see that every day. And I remember, yes, I need to take care of my needs. That's really important for this week. So they're the cards for uh, my weekly readings. And I never thought I would be a Hay House kind of, uh, Kyle, not Kyle Gray, because I've always liked Kyle Gray actually, to be fair, but that sort, those sort of cards, but I'm finding just having them as message cards from guides, angels, ancestors, um, I'm finding, you know, really, really useful. And again, they sit there now all week. So when I come home each day, they're there. Then for my meditation, because once I've written that down and I've, I, I, I want to do a meditation. So I have a number of altars in my home. I have this one. So this is just a reading space rather than an altar, but it's a sacred space. I've got my goddess. I have incense lit, I have candles. Um, I love sitting at my desk here. I've got this beautiful, beautiful embroidery as well from uh, Giselle, the Mad Witch of one of my favorite places in the world, Glastonbury. Um, so sometimes I'll sit here and have my cards in front of me and I will go into a meditation. Other times I will, um, I'll sit in front of my sacred space I have to be comfortable and I have to protect my back so there's no kneeling or sitting. I've got a bean bag but I can sit on that as long as my back is up against uh, a hard surface. Um, so I'll use my sacred space or I've even got a Buddhist altar which I tend to sit in front of that if I feel quite anxious because I find it very calming sitting in front of that. So moving the camera around to here, you will see a couple of other cards. Now, this is a symbol from this deck, which is Sacred Symbols Oracle Deck. Again, this is um, really straightforward. Um, so I'll shuffle this deck, I will pull a card, I will see what the symbol is. Uh, there's always a keyword, so or keywords. So we've got past life here, or here we've got divine masculine, and it gives me something to focus on. Now these I do daily. They're my week the cards here, are my weekly ones. These are daily because they're from from for meditation. So this is the card that I pulled just before coming on, and it is home, and this is the symbol. Um, and you know we have to consider don't we and this is something again to that will come through through meditation focusing on the symbol why home is important what home is um you know home to some to me might be completely different to somebody else but always finding your way back to your your home your safe space um and whatever else will come up when i when i do my meditation now the other card you'll see here. I've had these for a number of years and I absolutely love them. Um, these are psalm cards. Now I'm not a religious person at all but psalm cards they are a little bit chipped now because um, I've been using these for a few years so the gilded is starting to come off. You get 150 cards these are the backs and what I love about psalm cards is I don't read the book but even the book um you know it will give you a psalm but it will say on there it links to not just Christianity it links to Hinduism and lots of other um, belief systems but that aside for me I use this deck for the images and the images are really insightful um you know what if you pull a card from this what is the image conveying to you regardless of what the book might say um and i've i often how i used to use these would be to lay 
probably about four in a row and allow it to uh, form a storyboard because it's it's wonderful for that. But what I've done, I mean, this reminds me of Robin Hood. I mean, can you imagine pulling that, this card and home? Because that's, this is my city. <laughs> this symbol is around Nottingham everywhere, every pub and <laughs> Uh, even my friend's, friend's pub is called The Archer because it's named after uh, Robin Hood. But yeah, so today's image that I pulled is this lion, which automatically, you know, because I'm a tarot reader, I think of the strength card, but I think of courage. Um, but this is a, a, a lion in the shadows that's cowering. So maybe a message for me to contemplate as I, as I do my meditation this morning is, you know, where is my fearlessness gone? You know, where's my courage? Why, why do I feel that I'm in the dark? You know, how do I reclaim my inner lion, my inner strength? So that's my, my daily uh, cards for meditation purposes. Um, everything else that I'm about to about to show you is more about um just turn the camera back around pull it down a little bit now it's about my my tarot reading and i've mentioned i've shown this before but i just if i'm going to talk about my my daily practice i need to um talk about how how i uh, read the tarot so it really is about oh i've got it upside down typical Oops, it's about laying three cards. Now sometimes, and particularly in the past when I've been been in a rush, I will lay three cards down and have a think about, you know, what's, what's that telling me about my day ahead? I was gonna move the light, but that doesn't help. But I also have, you know, uh, what can hinder? What do I need to look out for? And that goes here underneath and then what can help, okay? And then I have my four cards there. So my spread, what to look out for, what's hidden, what's not obvious to me that I need to, to focus on and be, be alert for, be open to uh, looking out for, for this. And then what can, what can help the situation? So that's my basic, spread and I don't really do spreads other than that three cards um, but what will help what will hinder another card would be if there's a card that has like 79 cards if you get some extras then I often put in a significator card to represent me the querent and then again what's before and what's after for similar purposes um, so yeah so that's my intention going forward about reclaiming some time in the morning, not hitting that snooze button just to get an extra half an hour in bed because in the long run, I don't feel the benefit. <laughs> I may just for those few minutes of staying in bed, but to actually get up and spend time with my cards uh, in meditation and then lay in my tarot and contemplation, um, that is already is is paying dividends so thank you for spending a few moments with me it's not a long video today i just wanted to to share that and yeah you know share your daily practice um i'd love to know how you you start your day off how you uh, sit with your cards how you use your cards um and this way you know, bring in Oracle in on a weekly basis as well. And then some symbol cards. Um, they probably would have sat on the shelf for quite some time. Um, and having something to focus on in a meditation, for me, having an ADD brain as well, having something to focus on rather than just trying to clear and not think, I find uh, more beneficial um, because then the clarity comes. Okay, so I'm now <laughs> going to get ready for work, make my way across the city,
call in the coffee shop and get my favorite coffee and hopefully have a great day ahead. I hope you all do too. Until next time, go in peace. Namaste and blessed be. Thank mm-hmm. you.